Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Our and love. Our God is an awesome God. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, that's pretty good. Let's do it again. Good morning. Good morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Isn't it good to be here and be able to come and worship our Lord and Savior. We got about a full house this morning, and I see a lot of visitors this morning, and boy, do we love you being here. Every Sunday, we get visitors to come and, and witness and share with us and glorify our Lord and Savior. It's such a blessing, and we hope and pray you will come back and be a, a part of this fine church that we have here. And also on Facebook Live, we're glad to have you this morning. And our prayer is that you might come and join us one Sunday and be in our midst for a service. And if not, we're glad you can join us on Facebook Live. Today, our scripture reading is 1 Chronicles 28th chapter, the 20th verse. I want you to listen to this because you might want to apply for a job. And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord my God will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until you have finished the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Now this was talking about the building of the temple, okay? Got a question for you this morning. Have you been laid off? For the cause of Christ? I don't think Jesus would lay you off. Have you quit? Have you stopped servicing, working, doing for kingdom of God? Souls are dying every day, folks, going to hell. And it's up to us to tell them what awaits them if they don't know our Jesus. Are you employed for Jesus this morning? You say you're a Christian, but are you working for the cause of Christ? John 3.16, it's a good product that we have. Now let's go to work for him and share that to this lost and dying world that other people can come and know this Savior before it's everlasting too late. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We know this is serious business, God, when we talk about a hell that's for an eternity. But heaven is awaiting if they'll only turn their lives to you, Lord. Lord, help us as Christians to share your wonderful message of eternal life. And all they've got to do is accept it because it's been paid for on Calvary by that precious blood that you shed for us. Lord, do this and we will in your honor. In Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Today, the youth will meet at 5 o'clock. And don't forget that youth. They have a great time there. Also, the choir will meet immediately after church. Now, I've been telling you, the Brady Bunch is growing. Look at them. They're beautiful and they're growing. Well, most of them are beautiful. They're growing up there. Y'all need to come on and be a part of this. Now, I see people out here in this choir can sing. Well, whistle or hum or whatever, but you need to fill this choir up. So come on in here, stay a little bit today after service, and be a part of the Brady Bunch. They'd love to have you. Jesse Jude Food Pantry. Both teams need to meet Miss Bonnie Berg immediately following worship service today for a short meeting right here. If you're on the food pantry team right here for about five, ten minutes, Bonnie needs to meet with you. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, prayer time, followed by prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. Come and be a part of that. And then as always, 
Uh, remember, Thursday is the Veterans Coffee House. Boy, I'll tell you, they do a great job. Oh, Bill and Marshall and all the guys down there, and Larry and, and uh, Lord of mercy, Harry. Harry. <laughs> Couldn't even think of his name anymore. Harry's got a torn bicep. Pray for Harry. Uh, and pray for Phyllis because... Phyllis is the caregiver, and, and she'll have a time putting up with this guy, so pray for her, too. And, and uh, well, we're praying for you, brother. But remember Veterans Coffee House at 9 o'clock, uh, Thursday morning. The women of the church fix a hot breakfast, and it's wonderful. And, and I'll tell you, if you're a veteran, you ought to come. You really ought to come if you can. Thursday, March 24th, 9 o'clock. Now, for any other announcements, refer to your bulletin. And prepare your hearts right now for today's service. Thank you. Let's stand together again and turn to page 139. 139, doing the first and second verse, please. At last and did my Savior bleed. And in my sovereign die, would he divert that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I had done? He groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Thank you.
takes me for my long white robe. Fix me, Jesus, fix me. Fix me for my journey home. Fix me, Jesus, fix me. Are you like a piece of broken pottery this morning? Pieces everywhere. Shattered. Scattered. Shards everywhere. Is there something in your life which has broken you? It's so broken and scattered, you don't know if it can ever be fixed. It's broken beyond repair, sometimes we say. Is that your life today? Is that your life this morning? You're looking for the super glue to put it all back together. Even then, not knowing if all the pieces will fit. Have you admitted the brokenness in your life? Have you looked at the broken pieces and processed what has happened? It hurts too much and you just want to sweep it under the rug or you just want to sweep it out of the way, throw it away, not ever wanting to look at it again. See, that's the way we deal with brokenness in our lives. We think that if we can hide it somewhere in the back of our heart, or we can just put on this false face, that no one will ever know that we're broken, that we're shattered, that life hurts. Why is that? Because... We don't want other people to know 
that we're in shambles. This morning we're starting a new series called Broken. It's going to run us all the way through Easter. And we're going to tackle several truths about the things which break us. No better time than the present. No better time than going to the cross. No better time than seeking out the resurrection. We will find that brokenness is not always a negative thing. A lot of times we look at brokenness as a negative thing, and not all the time that's what it portrays, but it can be a positive truth in our lives. And we'll find the answers in the Word of God. You know, people go to so many places, but they never go to the Bible because why? It's outdated, it's antiquity. Doesn't have any meaning. We can't find what we need in there. But what we're going to find out is that the Bible does hold the answer to our brokenness. You see, we can hold on to the promises of the one who can heal the brokenness. I want to say that one more time. We can hold on to the promise of the one who can heal our brokenness. And he's the one that can put us back together. See, what, you, what, what usually happens when things are broken? Oh, you know what? You break things, what happens? You throw them away, right? Ah, they're no good. We might hold on to them for a while thinking we're going to fix them. But what happens? They clutter up our garage. They clutter up our drawers. They clutter wherever it may be that we're throwing them, right? And then one day when we're opening up trying to find something else, we just kind of toss them. Many times this is the way we treat our dilemmas in life, right? We hold on to them. We want to fix those things in our lives which come up, but we just don't know how to. You been there? Are you there now? If not, you will be at some point in time in your life. You say, well, Chris, they're just too painful to acknowledge. You know, the sharp pieces continue to cut at our hearts. You know, that corner where we've thrown them in our hearts and we've covered them up with all that stuff. It's kind of like the dirty laundry, you know. You're looking for that favorite pair of jeans and it's all on, on the pile, down on the bottom of the pile. And you're... Well, a lot of times when we try to cover up our brokenness, we just keep piling it on, piling other things on top of it. You know what? We'll forget about it. But even when we try to forget about them, they're, they're there. They're cutting our hearts. They're cutting our thoughts, reminding us of what is broke. Why is that? Well, I think Solomon says it well. In Proverbs 14, 10, he cuts to the chase in brokenness. You see, he says the heart knows its own bitterness doesn't matter how much we try to pile up in our hearts. It doesn't matter how much we, we try to push it or sweep it under the rug. We still know it's there. That bitterness is still there. No matter what it is that caused that brokenness, it's still there. We haven't dealt with it. But we need to. And this morning we're going to just be introduced to the first step of what we can do when we are broken and how we can allow the Lord to heal that brokenness. So if we would, let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your love and your mercy and your grace. And we thank you that we're your children and that we can come before your throne boldly and confidently and knowing that you want to hear us and you want to hear our concerns. And you want to know our hearts. Father, we come 
asking you this day that your Holy Spirit would fill us in understanding, Lord, that we can put those broken things in our lives at your feet. That you know them deeply. You're interested in them. And that you want to help us overcome them. Father, I thank you for each one here this morning. I don't know their hearts, but you do. You can see, you can search deep into the corners of where they may be hiding those broken things. You can bring them out and you can help us deal with them. And you can show us, Lord, that we're not broken beyond repair. But, Lord, you can put us back together. And that you love us. And even though our lives are messy, that you can use us. So, Father, I just pray that you would do a wonderful work here this morning. I thank you, Lord, how our hearts have already been prepared to hear what you have to say to us. Thank you, Lord, for all of that. For it's in Jesus' wonderful, blessed name we pray. Amen. So what's the definition of broken or brokenness? Have you ever thought about it? Why are you broke? Why am I broke? How do we get broken? Well, the definition in Webster says that it means it's being damaged or shattered. It could mean crushed or sorrowful. When we look around the world, we live in a broken world, right? When you look at it, you see brokenness all around you. It can be in your family. It can be in your immediate family. It can be an extended family. It can be your neighbors. It can be your friends. It can be wherever you're at. You look around the world and there's brokenness. You look in, uh, in Ukraine, there's brokenness. But you look right outside in our community. You don't have to go halfway around the world. You look right outside in the community, you can see brokenness. There's brokenness right inside this sanctuary this morning. Lives are broken. Family are broken. Churches are broken. People are looking for a solution to brokenness in their lives. They, they look all around in the wrong places, don't they? Usually when, when you're broken, you're always looking at some, somewhere else. Often people turn to alcohol or relationship upon relationships. They turn to drugs or they turn to something that, that they know that will not deal with their brokenness. Because all of that stuff in which I just mentioned, all it does is numb us from the brokenness within us. That's all it does. It numbs us so that we don't have to deal with it. That's the world in which we live in. We don't like to deal with what is broken inside of us. Because the culture tells us, hey, all you got to do is this, this, or this. Or a friend says, hey, come on, let's go out and party on the town. You'll forget all about it, right? A lot of times we turn our hearts inward and we don't share our hearts. Why is it? Because we're sitting there thinking, oh, but if people knew exactly why I'm broken, oh, they wouldn't welcome me in open arms. They wouldn't welcome me here at church. Oh, they wouldn't, they would think that I am a bad person. Folks, if you can't be broken in church, in a family of God who's supposed to love each other, who's supposed to support each other. Where can you be broken? Many Christians look for healing 
and because of the lack of authenticity of other Christians who are broken too, there's no place to open up and to heal together. If we can't heal together in church, if we can't open up and trust our brothers and sisters in Christ, where else can we go? There's a way to deal with your brokenness this morning. The first step in dealing with your brokenness is to see the Lord for who he really is and worship him with a full heart. It's trusting in him to put you back together and that the glue that he uses will hold you no matter what. While there will be scars, right? Even in our brokenness, there's scars still left, right? What, y'all ever broken something that was your favorite piece and you're sitting down there at the table and you're starting to put all there and you get it back together and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know. There's the, man, you can see every crack in there. Well, guess what? It's all right. God can see every crack. Your brothers and sisters in Christ may be able to see a crack. But you know what? They share in your brokenness because their lives are cracked too. You see, when we look to the one who will turn our brokenness into a whole vessel... When we're put back together, it's not for us. It's for His glory. It's for His glory to be able to use us as His hands and His feet. Charles Spurgeon said this, There are many sorts of broken hearts. Christ is good at healing all of them. Helen Limmel gives us insight about the first step in healing our brokenness. She wrote these words. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I could stop there. but it goes right into the first truth that we need to learn about brokenness and where to go with our brokenness, and that's this. In times of your broken hearts, worship Him. In time of your broken hearts, worship Him. Doesn't that put a whole new perspective Going to turn your eyes upon Jesus. We're going to be in Psalm 147 this morning. The psalmist is writing about Israel coming home. Israel had been in captivity. They had been in Babylon. They had been scattered because of their disobedience. They were broken hearted. They were broken hearted because when they came back to Jerusalem, it needed to be rebuilt. They had been gone for 70 years. They haven't seen things in 70 years that they were used to. They would walk into the city and there would be nothing there. Their homes would be gone. They lost people while they were in captivity. They left people behind. And their hearts were broken and they were a broken people. Not only because of their disobedience, but because of just life every day. I want you to put yourself into that. You know it as well as I do, that life can break you. And he's reminding Israel about whom God is, what he has done, and what he is going to do. Look in verse 1 of Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and praise is becoming. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. It's a great 
verse to memorize. He counts the number of stars. He gives names to all of them. Great is our Lord and abundant in strength. He is understanding. Uh, his understanding is infinite. The Lord supports the afflicted. There's another good verse. That's a promise. He brings down the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises to our God on the lyre. Who covers the heavens with clouds. Who provides rain for the earth. Who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beast its foods. And to the young ravens which cry. He does not delight in the strength of a horse. He does not take pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord favors those who fear him. Those who wait. For his loving kindness. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gate. He has blessed your sons within. He makes peace in your borders. He satisfies you with the finest of the wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth. He, his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He casts forth his ice as fragments. Who can stand before his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters to flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinance to the Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his ordinance, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. In times of your broken heart, worship him. I want you to think about what the people of Israel were doing. They were, they were walking back days upon days, coming back, being scattered, broken, not knowing what they're going to face, not knowing how life is going to be. What does that word, word worship mean? An awed response. It means an awed response to the saving acts and praiseworthy character of God. Is that how you respond in your brokenness? No. <laughs> you know what? Out of the mouth of babes come truth. Maybe she needs to come up here. She's good, okay? This will let you know she's good. Don't worry about it. But you know what? She's telling the truth. Because we don't go to the Lord our God, Yahweh, when, when our lives are broken or something is broken in our lives. We do not go to Him first, do we? Where do we go? Inward to ourselves. An awed response to the saving acts and praiseworthy character of God. It's an encompassing the magnificence of God. When's the last time you have went to God in your brokenness and just sat and just thought upon his glory and magnificence? Bowing down in humble gratitude. Lifting up the name of the Lord. Boy, isn't that counter-cultural? How are you making it through? You know, I'm praising God. You're praising God? Are you crazy? They've done this to you. This is happening in your life. He's the cause of it. You see, we praise him for who he is. Verse 1, praise the Lord, for it's good to sing praises to our God. Not just on Sunday mornings. Every day. Look at verse 7. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises to our God on the lair. Look at verse 12. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Hey, church, praise the Lord. 
He's worthy of it. Look in verse 20. The very end. What's it say? Praise the Lord. You see, he's the creator. He's the sustainer of life. He's the builder of life. How do we know that? Well, look in verse 4. He counts the number of stars and he gives them by name. He knows every star by name. He knows everything about all things. He put them there. He named them. Everything in this universe is sustained by him. How do I know that? Colossians 1, 14 through 16 tells us that he is the designer of this world and that he sustains everything, your life and my life, together. And everything in this world he sustains. He created them. He created you uniquely. He's a compassionate God and a caring God. Look in verse 6. How do we know he's caring and compassionate? The Lord supports the afflicted. You know what? When you're broken, you're afflicted, whatever it may be, the Lord's right there. He's saying, call on me. Let me support you through this. Let me... Let me Bring in some other people in your life to help you, support you, lean on them and me. Worshiping and praising him brings joy to our hearts. Verse 1, you know what that word praise means? It means hallelujah, hallelujah to my king, hallelujah to my Lord. When's the last time, even maybe today, you're broken? When's the last time you said, hallelujah, Lord, I don't know why I'm broken, but you do. And Lord, I praise you. I praise you for this brokenness. Because you see, it's not about me. It's about you. It's not about me. It's not about my glory. It's not about my sins. It's about what you want me to do. And I give you praise. And I praise you for everything that's going on in my life right now. Even though I don't understand it. You see, when we do that, we're filled with gratitude and blessedness. When we put our eyes upon Jesus... And, and then the things of the world grow strangely dim, then there's no room for us to what? Have self-pity, feel sorry for ourselves, right? Because all of a sudden, we're focusing our eyes on the one who can take care of the problem. It's during our brokenness we should be praising the Lord with our hallelujahs. Praising. Worship Him in song through our voices. We should remember His greatness. Look in verse 5. Great is our Lord and abundant in strength and His understanding is infinite. Is that who you see the Lord as? Do you see the Lord as great? Do you understand that he has the strength to overcome, to put wherever those pieces are? You might not even know where those pieces are that's been shattered. They could be under the couch someplace. They could be outside after you were uh, mowing the lawn and, and whatever it is. But he can grab each piece no matter where they're at. And he can put them back together. That's how great a God he is. Oh, Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, send him to die, I scarce can take it in. 
that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then seems my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. When Christ shall come in shouts of acclamation, take me home what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. Do you see that when we get down to worshiping the Lord, that our brokenness all of a sudden becomes real small? And we see the greatness of who he really is and what he can do in his strength in our lives. Secondly, in times of your broken heart, remember his word. Remember his word. Look in verse 15. The psalmist writes, he sends forth his command to the earth. Verse 19, he says, he declares his word to Jacob his statutes, and his ordinances to Israel. That's God's word. That's the scriptures. That's the Old and the New Testament to us. It was the Torah to them. They were a scattered people. Verse 2 said, he gathers the outcast of Israel. They were scattered all over the place. Folks, you know what? Usually one day a week, maybe two, we're gathered as God's people in this church. But most of the time we're scattered, are we not? The other five to six days we're scattered out in, in the world. And there's a lot of things that can break us in, in this world. But on that Sunday morning, when you're laying in bed and you, you think, man, I really ought to go to church, that's the Holy Spirit who's saying, come, oh broken ones, come and worship me. Come and be in my house. Come and remember my word. You see, he is there for you. He wants to rebuild your life if you will let him. He wants to cure the brokenness and the disease in our lives. He wants to repair the damage done in the walls of our heart. But to do this, we must evaluate our hearts and lives. And we must come before the throne of God. Look in verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. That's a promise. You understand, that's a promise. Maybe you need to write that on your mirror in the morning. Maybe you need to put that on your refrigerator. Maybe you need to put that on the TV screen or the computer screen, or wherever you can see it, to understand that he heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. He wants to cure that. But we must come before his throne, and we must agree with him on our brokenness. He can't do anything if we continue to deny our brokenness. There's no way. He can do that. If we continue to look everywhere else but before the throne of God, we're continuing to be broken. But when we come to Him and we say, hey, I've tried everything else. You know what? I've read 27 million books on self-help. I've, I've listened to Oprah three times. I've listened to Dr. Phil and I've listened to this person. But Lord, I'm still broken and I can't get down in my heart and, and it's still there. And I come before you and I agree with you, Lord, I'm broken and you're the only one that can do it. He 
even when we don't understand it. My favorite verse, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, our brokenness, and we'll talk about this in the coming weeks, our brokenness can be because of sin in our life. But sometimes our brokenness is there and we don't understand it, but God does. And God loves a contrite heart. And when you come and you take your focus off yourself before the throne, then he can take a piece of pottery. If you've ever watched the potter's wheel, that old potter throw that lump of clay on that wheel and start spinning, start molding that base up, puts it in, creates this beautiful vessel. If you've never seen that, I would encourage you to go look and watch somebody it's just at. Because that's what God can do in your brokenness. You see, he honors our hearts and our lives. We have his promise. Look in verse 13 and 14. We have his promises of this. Strength. For he has strengthened the bars of your gate. He will provide us with strength to get through, to, to, to overcome this brokenness. Look in 13. He has blessed your sons within. He will bless you when you come humbly before him and those around you. Look in verse 14. He satisfies you. There's satisfaction when you come before him and, and you acknowledge to him you can't do it. He'll provide for you. And then lastly, He'll give you peace. First portion of verse 14. He makes peace in your borders. He will give you peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace in your brokenness. Even though he's working through that, no matter where you're at in that brokenness, he'll give you peace because why? Because you're focused on him, the one who can take care of it and not on you. Songwriter Leonard Cohen wrote these lyrics. Saved by your mercy, found in your grace, totally surrendered to your embrace. And there's nothing more than you. See your perfection, I'm lost in your peace. Your faithfulness sings over me, and your love is the light of my soul. And I lift my eyes to you, creator of the world, and I stand in all of you, of your glory. And I live to worship you, Son of God, King of heaven, King of heaven. Jesus, I am saved by your mercy. I'm saved by your mercy, found in your grace. Totally surrendered to your embrace. And there's nothing more than you. See your perfection. I am lost in your peace. Your faithfulness sings over me. And your love is the light of my soul. And I lift my eyes to you, creator of the world. I stand in all of you, of your glory. I live to worship you, son of God, king of heaven. And the angels round your throne cry out, holy, holy, holy. To the one who is to come, hear us sing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 1 of Psalm 147. Toby Powers gives a great sermon illustration as we wrap this up. It's about a heartbroken little girl. He says a heartbroken little girl began to kneel and pour out her heart to God in the, at the altar at her local church. She didn't know what to say. As she wept, Speechless, 
she began to remember what her father had told her. He said, God knows your needs even before you pray. And he can answer when you don't even know what to ask for. So she began to say her ABCs. A concerned adult from the church knelt beside her and heard her sobbing, saying her ABCs, and inquired what exactly she was trying to do. And the little girl told this caring adult, I'm praying to God from my heart. But the adult answers, it sounds like to me, <laughs> this is what adults do. <laughs> sounds like to me, more like you're saying your a alphabet, your ABCs. Yes, she said, but God knows more about what I need than I do. And he can take all these letters and arrange them in just the right way to hear and answer my prayers. What you think about that? In your brokenness, when you don't know how to pray, but you come and you worship and you pray God's word back and you're reminded of his promise that he loves you and that he cares for you and that he has the best for you. You don't have anything else? Say your ABCs. Allow him to put it together. When we worship God for who he is and praise him because he is worthy, we take the focus off of us and put it on the one who has the power to heal us. Two powerful truths in this psalm. There's a lot of truth in this psalm. But I just wanted to point out two powerful truths. Worship him in your brokenness. And remember his word and his promise to you. Where are you at this morning? Where are you at this morning? Are you going to take the first step to fix that brokenness in your life this morning? Are you going to worship the Lord? Are you going to come humbly before Him and ask Him for His help? Do you need to come down front on the altar? I don't know. The altar is open. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab a friend. If they won't come, let me know. I'll come down and pray with you. I know the deacons will too. You won't be alone. If there's something broke in your life, go to the one who can fix it. Maybe you're saying, Chris, you know what? My whole life's a mess and it's messed up and it's more scrambled than the alphabet soup. And I don't know who this Lord you're talking about is. Well, today's the day. Today's the day for you to get to know him. Today is the day of salvation. He died for you. The God of this universe sent his son to die on the cross so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He died for you, shed his blood for you and your sins. was buried and raised again on the third day so that we can have victory in the we can have victory in our brokenness folks but he's the only one that can pro provide enough power to fix it so if that's you this morning you know what you don't have to come and ask me about it you can you can meet him right where you're at you don't need a priest you don't need a pastor you don't need all you need is you and him because he is our high priest intercessoring for us go to him and tell him you want him in your life and I can promise you sincerely meaning that he will come into your life and he will show you a new life that you've never seen before maybe you're here and you'd like to be a member of this church man we're doing a lot of different things 
If God's pointing you this way, come on. You come, however you want to do it. Brady, Ronald, Joyce, during this time of invitation, just do what the Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Let us stand together, please. all about. Thank you, Lord, for your word that we should plant in our hearts each and every day to be able to get through that day. I pray for each person here. I don't know what's on their hearts, but Lord, you do. And I ask, Lord, that you would just continue to reaffirm to them this week that you love them, that you know where they're at, that piece by piece, you're putting them back together. I thank you, Lord, for the way that you work in lives. And I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to work in the hearts and the minds as we leave this place. You're a great and mighty God. You're kind. You're compassionate. You're mercy-filled. You're loving and your grace is everlasting. I pray, Lord, that you would find us obedient, that you would find us thankful, and, Lord, that our hearts would be full as we leave this place, that they would be a light into this dark world, 
And we would just take a little bit of time if somebody starts talking about their brokenness to listen. And Lord, in that, if we share that common bond, then allow us to share our stories of brokenness with them. And more importantly, to let them know that there is a God who has sent His Son for them to heal them, to help them along in this journey. And for that, we thank you. For it's in Jesus' most precious, wonderful, blessed, powerful name.